Hello, honors physics students. Let's go over some homework. So make sure you have your Cutnell and Johnson problems in your text. Uh, it was only Cutnell and Johnson problems in front of you and your solutions. Let's take a look at focus on concepts number 11. We've got objects that's created left of a lens. We've got some parallel rays of light coming in. We want to know which of the statements is true. Okay, this is really just a review. Last class, we had drawn the pictures, generic pictures for converging and diverging lenses. Let me just remind you what those look like. And for both of them, we have parallel rays of light coming in from the left, just like this picture here. It's just like the problem here really is no difference. It really is just a matter of recall. Clearly, uh, which one is true here? What's well, going to be choice E? Rays pass through a focal point lens only if it's a converging lens. Remember, to converge literally means to bring together. That's what converge means. To diverge is to spread apart, right? Two roads diverged in a wood. And I took the path bus, traveled by, and it has made all the difference. Getting a little Robert Frost up in here, right? So these rays would be spreading apart for a diverging lens. That's not converging to a point, so it's certainly only for a converging lens. What shape is converging lens? Let's remind ourselves that it's convex in shape, which just means it's thicker in the middle than it is on the edge. Regardless of what the book does in terms of naming other types of shapes, as long as it's thicker in the middle and thinner on the edge, it'll act as a converging lens. Anything that's thinner in the middle and thicker on the edge will act as a diverging lens. Let's take a look at number 12. Which type of lens? Single lens produces a virtual image that is inverted with respect to the object. So you can look at all the ray diagrams we've done so far and the problems we've done, and hopefully you came to the conclusion that neither converging or diverging lens produces such an image because for a single device, virtual images are always upright. And that's actually true for whether it's a lens or a mirror. Uh, inverted images are always real, and so they will never go together as long as we have a single device. Certainly, if we stack devices, there's other possibilities, but for a single device, you can't get it. Let's take a look at some of the ray diagram problems here, starting with problem 49. Here we have a converging lens. Let's remind ourselves, is this convex or concave? Yep, this is convex. It's thicker in the middle, thinner on the edge. And so here's my parallel ray of light converging to the focal point on the other side. There's the 50 centimeter focal point. Here's my central ray. I even drew the optional focal ray. If you want to imagine starting from the focal point on this side, going up through the tip of the arrow, here we go to the dashed line. We extend the dashed line up and down be you know, beyond the confines of the lens itself. And we go to where that is. We make our approximation that refracts once, parallel. We trace all these rays backwards because these rays are clearly diverging. And here's the only way to locate that image. If you get these rays to come out of the lens and they're spreading apart, don't say, there's no way to do it. So you have to remind yourself that when it comes to light, humans are stupid, right? And so we think light comes to us in straight lines, and so you trace those light rays backwards. Now, remember, when we trace them backwards, we draw them as dashed lines because the light's not really doing this. We just think the light is coming from there. We don't put arrows on these rays because the light's not actually doing it. It's all just imaginary. But they certainly will connect over here on this side. And remember, the ray diagram is not complete until the image is drawn. That's the whole point of the ray diagram. The image is drawn from the principal axis to the connection point. Let's look at the math. Hopefully, you did the math first. Remember, that's my advice. In any of these problems, in any of these problems, you always do the math first. Always, always, always do that. Because look what happens. All right, our focal length is 50 centimeters. We predicted 75 centimeters to the left, or a positive, a negative 75 centimeters on the wrong side of the lens. And look what happened. If this is 50, and there's 100, yep, it looks like it's right there at 75. Magnification should be 2.5. You can even measure the size of this object, measure the size of the image. You should get a ratio of 2.5. Try it out. You'll see everything should work really, really well. And we also remind you that every time we draw these rays, make sure we have arrows on all of them. And as I mentioned before, even though you may know that this focal ray will get traced backwards, and these rays will get traced backwards, you still show the actual refracted ray. That's a very common mistake I see students do, is forgetting to draw this refracted ray just because they, they say, oh, I know I'm going to trace it backwards, so I won't bother doing that. That's wrong. That's wrong. We always draw the refracted ray, and then if you need to, you trace it backwards. So is this image real or virtual? Take a second and think about that. Yeah, this would be a virtual image. If you're standing over here, the light diverges when it gets to you, which means you have to trace it backwards, right? Anytime we trace it backwards, you're getting a virtual image. Or if this is a source of light and you put a screen here, could we get the light to project on the screen? Well, remember we talked about the idea that if this is a source of light, yes, some of that light will certainly go onto the screen. But remember, it hasn't gone through the lens yet. And the whole point is you want the light to have gone through the lens, to be manipulated by the optical device, and then focus onto a screen. And certainly these rays that go through the lens will not then go onto the screen. That's how we know it's a virtual image. The image itself would not appear on a screen back here. That doesn't mean you can't see it. When you have a lens in your hand, you can certainly see this. It just can't project onto a screen. Let's look at number 51. 
a very similar problem, another converging lens, another image that gets traced uh, with a raised trace backwards, which makes another virtual image. And notice that both of these have the object within the focal length, closer to the lens than the focal length. These are the patterns you want to start to see developing here. Anytime the object is within the focal length of a converging lens, it's going to be a virtual image here. Let's look at the math. We should have gone 24 centimeters to the right. In other words, we should have gone a negative 24 centimeters, which is another indication of a virtual image. So let's see. If this is 12, this is 24. Yep, looks like that image is right there on the 24 centimeter line. It should be really, really close to it. 